Hi everyone and welcome to Rum Runner Dance. I'm Dan Genovese. Today we're going to be making a classic cocktail, the martini. So today we're focusing on a classic cocktail, the martini. And the martini, like a lot of classic cocktails, eh, has a murky origin to it. You know, it didn't really exist, you know, 100 years ago, 140 years ago, like it does today. Makes sense. Well, let's find out why though. So when we look back, when Jerry Thomas was publishing his book, that was the basis for what um, Dave Wondridge uh, analyzed in his book, Imbibe, was a popularity of gin at the time was really focused more on Holland gin. Holland gin is what we commonly know today as Jennifer. And Jennifer is just a sweet gin. Um, London dry gin is a dry gin, no sugar added, and old Tom gin kind of sits in between them. It, it, it has a lot of the elements of a dry gin, but it has a little bit of sweetness, but not nearly as much as uh, old, uh, as Jennifer does. So Old Tom Gin is often referred to as that missing link gin. The reason why that's important is during the early part, the 1860s, you know, I would say even up to like the 1880s, you know, when we're looking at published works about gin, gin normally calls for Holland gin. It normally calls for sweet vermouth because the big kind of gin drinks of the day were fixes and slings which are a little bit sweeter in nature and Holland Gin fits in with those pretty well. Um, but then the American palate started to change a little bit and we got dry vermouth and we're like, hey, this is good, but mixing dry vermouth with a sweet gin just didn't work out so well. So that's when people really started to use London dry gin. Uh, dry gin, dry vermouth kind of balanced each other a little bit better. So they started with that. So. The popularity, the tipping point, really we see switching between the gin that's being used in the United States came around the 1880s, 1890s. So that's when we see Holland gin being imported actually starting to lose towards London dry gin. And London dry gin took over at that point and never, never looked back. It's been pop more popular in the U.S. ever since. Now. London dry gin popularity doesn't automatically mean that's when the martini was really created. That's kind of a little bit more murky. The first instance that we kind of have of like something that resembles a modern martini was actually called uh, the Marguerite um, cocktail, which came out of probably one of my favorite names for a hotel ever, the Knickerbocker Hotel uh, in New York City. And that drink actually had similar measurements. It had dashes of orange bitters, it had dry vermouth, and it used dry Plymouth gin. Now, Plymouth gin is like a small offset of like London dry gin. It has a little bit different flavoring on it. it has to come from a specific area, at least as of when this video was created, it has to come from a specific area. I, know, I believe that that um, regulation is expiring. Um, so people could actually make Plymouth gin and call it Plymouth gin if you're not in Plymouth, England. Um, but I digress. So th that was the start of it. And it kind of continued in popularity from there. But when the martini really happened, we're not really sure. There's the Martinez uh, cocktail that came out in California. And some people say that it was popular because of, you know, it was made out there because people used to go out and go on the ferry and they used to have this drink before they used to go out. And some people say it was created, but then it was named for the town. And that's why it's called the Martini um, in honor of the town of Martinez, California. Like I said, when it comes to classic cocktails, you can always find these minute little things about it that just take you down rabbit holes. Ultimately, what we can kind of see is a evolution that prohibition really influenced kind of like a lot of different cocktails where we started with something that was sweeter change in palette went to drier and then we have prohibition <laughs> prohibition cut us off from lemon dry gin jennifer any kind of gin didn't matter um and that's where bathtub gin came in 
And if you remember the episode or watch the episode that I had around uh, the hurricane, you remember I went in a little bit about what happened with some of those uh, alcohols that they were creating during Prohibition. Um, so check that video out. I won't go into all the details there. But likewise, because of that, you had a lot more of this gin that was available and people used to like to drink it and they liked it drier. At the end of Prohibition, it kind of continued. So that's where you really get the, the, you know, the martini and the dryness uh, and the, the American taste for a drier cocktail kind of evolve over time. So where the name came from, eh, kind of a little murky. Its origins of how it kind of got here seemed to be a little bit more of a, ta a change in taste and then something that Prohibition kind of influenced out of a necessity. And then after that, it kind of got ingrained in the culture and continued. So with that, we're going to go and get the, uh, start making the cocktail. And normally I would do a cut scene right now, but you know what? I'm not going to. I'm human. I make mistakes. So I forgot an ingredient. I didn't grab my vermouth, so I'm gonna be right back. Uh, where did I put that? Oh, here it is. Aha! <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> Aha! Um, I had to go to my refrigerator, actually my wine fridge now. I'm a little bit happy, as you notice. I'm in a little bit different place. That's why I didn't post for a while, guys. I've been had to move, um, along with some other things that I had to take care of. Um, so, vermouth, dry vermouth. I like Dolan's here. Um, we're going to be using that today. This is cold. Um, one thing that is very important about a martini is the vermouth. And I'm going to tell you right now, nothing makes vermouth go bad faster than putting it on a shelf. Um, it's okay to put on a shelf in a store before it's open. But once it's open, um, this stuff is like, think of it like an apple, okay? An apple starts to oxidize and everything, and it starts to go bad. Can you imagine a cut apple sitting on your counter, and then it just goes moldy real fast and tastes nasty, even the next day? Same thing happens with vermouth. It's very delicate, so put it into the refrigerator. Absolutely put it back into a refrigerator and store it. You should keep it, uh, I would say you want to use it in a month, ideally, maybe two. Um, that's why when I get, uh, uh, when I actually get it, this time I actually got a 750 milliliter bottle. I actually normally buy smaller bottles on purpose um, because I don't drink it enough to get through a bottle and normally the amount of time. I'm going to have to be inventive to figure out a way to get through this. I'm sure I can find a couple ways to do that. Um, but make sure that you always keep it in the refrigerator. And actually most of them, yep, right on the back it says, once open, keep chilled. And it actually has it on the back. This is why I like Dolan. Dolan's a good brand. Um, on the back here, it actually says, bottle opened, and it gives you a place to put the date. So this way you can keep it, and you don't keep it too long. So make sure that, you know, vermouths, all your vermouths, chill them once you open them, put them in the refrigerator. They are not something that you put on the shelf. All right, so here we go. Mixing glass. So mixed, drink, uh, stirred drink today. So we're going to start off with bitters. We're going to do two dashes of orange bitters. So orange bitters that I'm using here, Angostura, use any kind that you have on hand. All right, next we're going to use our uh, fresh bottle of Dolan Dry Vermouth. Now, the, the recipe and the ratios, there's a lot of different ones out there. I like to go with the one that Imbibe has on their website, um, which just does a two-to-one gin to uh, vermouth ratio. Um, so I'm going to put in an ounce of dry vermouth here. And a big splash of that went off uh, to my board. It's all right. If you guys ever watch How to Drink, Greg does it too all the time. Um, we all do it. We just normally edit it out. Eh, we're going to leave it in today. Um, okay, two ounces of gin. I'm using Tanger right here. You want to use your favorite London dry gin. Now, um, when it comes to which London dry gin you should use, that's kind of up to you. Um, Tangeray is great. Beef Eaters is good. Ford's gin. I mean, you heard me talk about Ford's gin, I think, in most of my drinks. Um, so I, I like them all. So 
pick the one that you like the best um, and then go ahead and um, use that and drink that. All right, so now we're gonna need ice. So today, instead of putting it in a martini glass, I have to admit, my martini glasses are quite large, um, and I don't feel like drinking that big of a martini today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm doing a smaller version of, uh, it's like a cross between a coupe glass and a martini glass, it's called a Nick and Nora glass, so I'm gonna use that. But we need to chill this down. Um, so I'm gonna grab some ice here. Some ice cubes, we're at home so we can use our hands, it's fine. Um, so we're just gonna leave those ice cubes in there to start to chill that glass down. Now, I like to use nice big rock of ice in here. Put it onto your spoon, slowly go down into here so you don't end up with your drink everywhere. And then we start to stir. Um, people are like, how long do you stir this? I've seen so many videos on YouTube around like, bartenders stirring for like three seconds four seconds i timed it um it was actually on the clock and i'm like how did you chill that cocktail down enough i'm like unless you're starting with a frozen mixing glass and gin that was in the freezer i i don't know how you chilled that down um because you want a little bit of dilution here but the dilution comes at the proper in the proper way from chilling down the drink which is, as you can see, my finger right here is up against the glass. As soon as this starts to get cold, it's done. So that was way longer than most of the places, uh, most of the times I saw um, on the internet. So we're gonna take this ice here. We're just gonna dump this out into our sink. All right. Now, it's known as a julep strainer. Um, you can, don't have to use a julep strainer. You can actually be honest, you could just get a Hawthorne strainer and use one strainer. Um, I just like the julep strainer. Looks nice. I'm gonna pour that right into our glass there. Get a nice good wash line on it. See, perfect. In my, if I used my uh, martini glass for that, that would have been like a quarter full. Now we're gonna add in our lemon. All right. So lemon here, I'm just gonna pull a nice, not like that. We're gonna pull a nice big piece of lemon, if I can get it. Sometimes I have some problems with these peelers. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, now with a martini, a lot of times you'll get people who will use a channel knife and it will, they'll pull a big twirly piece out of the actual, um, out of a lemon when they put it on. Yeah, it looks nice. I don't really like that as much um, because it doesn't stay on the glass and it ends up going into the drink and I don't like it in my drink. Um, so what I like to do is I like to cut this piece. Now you notice I'm not expressing this inside of the drink. Um, that's intentional. Um, because I don't express the oils from this inside of my martini. I actually just clean this up, make this look a little pretty, put a little slit down the middle. So all I did is I kind of trimmed it up, oop, trimmed it up here so it looks a little nice. Then all we do is we curl it, okay? And I put a little slit down the middle here. You can kind of see that right there. Maybe you can't because my finger was in the way of the camera. There's a little tiny slit, trust me, right in the middle. I want to put it right in here. Just tip of the blade, do a little twist, and then with some luck and holding your breath. I'm kidding, you don't have to hold your breath. You go ahead and you can put that guy right there on the edge of the glass, of the glass there. Okay. Well, not gonna lie, it doesn't look that great, so we're gonna put it in the glass this time. Yeah, I'm breaking my own rule. All right, so let's grab our stuff out of the way here. Do, do, do. So, coaster, Woodrow, always. Grab that, martini, served up. There you are. That is a classic martini. Stirred, not shaken. This isn't James Bond movie.
Let's give it a taste. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Um, so, mm. so it's nice, it's simple, it's clean, but it's still a little complex. So if you get the people that like say, oh, you take a little bit of varying amounts of uh, vermouth in your drink. The amount that I put in here, you taste it. So just so you know, vermouth is wine. Um, it's wine that's infused with herbs. Some people don't like the herbs that are infused in it. Most people I would say that don't like vermouth, mostly don't like it because the drink that they were served, the vermouth was bad. Um, like I said, remember, you have to refrigerate this and you can't keep it that long. So this has a finite shelf life on it once that seal is open. So that's one big thing. Uh, the next thing is they probably didn't have it in a good ratio to the gin. Um, <laughs> or as my wife likes to tell me, sometimes they don't like vermouth because they don't like vermouth. <laughs> in case you heard her. Um, that's my wife, my loving wife, Joey, um, uh, who always, she loves gin, loves gin, actually loves Tangeray. It's why I buy it. Um, and, uh, but she hates vermouth. I like it, um, but that's okay. Uh, so the vermouth you do taste in here, the London Dry Gin, you, you wanna pick one where you like the taste of it because the, the botanicals come through on it, but also has a nice play with the dole in here. So you're getting a little bit of herbs, you're getting that accentuation of those botanicals. And then always with good London Dry Gins, they always put some kind of peel in it, some kind of citrus peel, and that gets like elevated a little bit with your bitters here with your orange bitters. Now remember, like I said before, the brand of orange bitters you use really is gonna influence how it comes through in your cocktail. Um, so like Regan's is very orange flavored. You know, th this is kind of a middle of the road Angostura, but there are other ones that kind of taste more like orange water, um, which if you're not familiar with orange water, it's one of the things that you use in making orja, or also you can use it in making grenadine too. You put a little bit of that in there. It smells like an orange blossom flower rather than smells like an orange, actually the fruit. So that's really it here. It's good, clean flavor, nice, um, nice uh, vermouth flavor complements that gin really nice get a good citrus note on it easy sipper have this right before you're getting ready to sit down for a fancy dinner and there you have it everyone the classic martini so please please like and subscribe follow us on our videos um we're going to be coming out with a lot more um here really soon and until next time everyone okole maluna Mmm, that's good stuff. See you next time.